All right, I want to start off by saying, Call Hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of GMS who rule well and who taught me this truth. And uh, Shalom to you, sincere Akim out there listening, learning, and pushing this truth. All right. And I'm going to jump straight into the video. Hopefully, it's not too long. I got um, a couple scriptures lined up. All right. And uh, let's jump straight into it. All right. Um, the first scripture I want to pull is Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Okay. And uh, let me put the red letter on because we know this is out of uh, so called Christ's mouth. All right. This is so out of uh, Yahweh Shai, straight out of Yahweh Shai's mouth. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. It says, give not that which is holy unto dogs. And what does holy mean, right? Holy means separate. And we know we're supposed to be separate. Yasharala, Israel, the nation of Israel is separate from amongst all the other nations, okay? And not to mention within Yasharala, the elect is separate from, from the rest of the nation of Israel. We already know this, all right? So it says, and what is it talking about? What What is this thing that he's talking about? He's talking about the truth, okay? This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It says, Matthew 7 and 6, Give not that which is holy unto dog, unto the dogs, neither cash ye pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Okay? And that's a basic scripture that everybody knows. We all know that scripture. But, you know, you really got to eat the roll and digest the roll. Meditate on the scriptures. Why Why? Is, why did the most, why did Yahweh Shai say that, man? Okay, that's what this lesson is going to be, you know, divulged into. Why? 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 Okay? But I'm, I'm going to leave that alone, okay? We're going to get back to that. Because that's the main topic. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, man. Don't teach these people, these scoffers, these naysayers the truth, man. If somebody comes up once or twice and they keep scoffing and they this and that, then keep it moving, man. Don't teach them, man. They're scoffers. It's not meant for them to get it. You're wasting your time. They're demons, okay? All right, this is uh, first, I want to get first Thessalonians. Uh, I'm going to start at 5 and 19. It says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. So we're supposed to teach, right? That's what we're supposed to do, you know, when the spirit gets on you. And, but the main point that I wanted to get is 5 and 21. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, Okay? So that's the that's the main thing. You got to make these people that come up prove everything, man. And that's another. Don't don't just go on 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 rants, man. Everything you say, back it up with a scripture. If they don't want to deal with the scripture, let them keep it moving, man. Simple as that. It's simple. This thing is not hard. It's simple. If they don't want to deal with the scriptures, tell them to keep it moving, man. Don't be arguing with the same people over and over about the same shit. Obviously, it's not meant for them. They just out there to scoff. We out there supposed to be fishing, fishing for the elect, not entertaining fools, entertaining the dogs, the swine, okay? All right, and this is a, a I want to get this too. Ecclesiastes, this is a, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1, because you got to understand, we got to have a ruling class mentality, man, you know? You got to, do you really have faith? Do you re really believe we have the truth? Do you really believe the apostles, starting from apostles to heart on down, is the, are the prophets? Or do you believe you're a prophet? If you're a prophet, carry yourself in such a manner. You know? You don't have to entertain every Tom, Dick, and Harry, man. You know? You have to have a ruling class mentality. We have this truth. It's precious. And it's serious, man. It's not just for everybody. Okay? And this is for the this, this scripture is for the people that come up to the camps, man. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Lord, of the house of, of Yahweh, Salakia, and be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil, okay? So these people that come up to us, they don't have the answers. Now, we, you can debate with somebody, yes, but it has to be, they have to prove everything. You have to go precept upon precept. Don't let them just breeze past something. Let them, stay, let them answer one thing and then move on. And if somebody doesn't have the answer, they're not qualified to debate, okay? It says, be not rash with thy mouth. Exactly, because we are the prophets. We humbly, we say that, you know, we got to be humble, yes, but also you got to be bold, man. This ain't a fucking game. We got the truth, man. They don't have the truth. They have no understanding. They need to shut the fuck up and learn. 
And if they're not willing to, 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 to be truthful and say when they're wrong or admit when this is that and or they don't know something and be, no, don't don't entertain them, man. They're not sincere. If they have the answers, why are they coming up to us? Okay. It says, be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before Yahweh. For Yahweh is in heaven and thou open and thou open earth. Therefore, let the words be few. That that goes for us also. Like I said, keep keep it simple, man. If you say something, make sure you have a scripture to solidify. It. Just don't go on rants, back, battling back and forth about scriptures. Pull the scriptures, you know. Don't let them wiggle their way out of it, man. A lot of these people that come up are de deceivers. They know the truth, and they're up there just to just to cause contempt, man. You got to use wisdom. This is, I wanted to get this to Amos 3 and 7, because we know this scripture, but do you really believe it? Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord, Yahweh, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh, has spoken, who can but prophesy? Okay, but the main point I wanted, do you really believe you're a prophet? And if you're a prophet, carry yourself in such a manner. Don't just be teaching everybody, man. You use wisdom. Ignore people. Yahweh shall ignore people. It's not for everybody, man. Now you know a scoffer when you see a scoffer. Don't entertain a scoffer. Just keep it moving. I wanted. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this, and I'm gonna get. Again, I wanted to prove another point too. All right. Pro, this is a Proverbs 28 and one. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Okay, so you're supposed to be bold in this truth because we right, we got the truth, man. You know what I'm saying? When you're in your going in your everyday life, you may be humble and this and that. When when you out there, not you bold, man. Don't nobody don't let nobody come up to you and tell you no bullshit, man. You don't have to entertain it. If they talking shit, they not they not right. Don't speak to them, man. Simple. You know you we got the truth, man. We have studied. We we put in the work. Don't let them come up and just talk bullshit. Put them in a box. Make them prove all things. Prove what they say. Okay? And uh, I'm, I, I digress to my point here, right? Because a lot of Edomites come up to the camp and they, and they want to jump onto the subject of Gentiles and can everybody be saved? Okay, we can deal with that. But let's deal with, 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 with first things first. Because the scriptures is about, it's one common theme throughout the whole scriptures. It's about Israel, Yasharala, and Esau. The protagonist and the antagonist. There's two characters throughout the whole scriptures, man. So, yeah, we could deal with the other minute, uh, other nations and all this other stuff. But let's deal with one thing at a time. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Put these people in a box. Make them commit and, and back up what they say. If they say. If they say something, make them prove it. And cut them with the scriptures. Stop letting them dance around. If they dancing around, this is not for them. Keep it moving. They not part of your elect. We not out there to debate. We out there to edify. Okay, we not out there to, to rant our vain opinions. We out there to, to prophesy these scriptures, man. This is Malachi one and one. The burden of the word of the Lord Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. And like I said, Israel is throughout the scriptures. Over, ask them why that shit keep coming up, man. Who is Israel? Who is this people? Where are they at? They don't. If you don't have an answer, you're not qualified to, to debate these scriptures, man. Go do your damn research. Who is Esau? Who is Jacob? If you don't know who these people are, don't come up to me, man. Go do your goddamn research. You're not qualified to debate the scriptures. Why? Because the prophets, the, the Lord revealed all things to his prophets. So obviously, if you don't know, you're not a fucking prophet. You're amongst the prophets. So shut your mouth and listen. Okay? Humbly. Starting with Apostle Tahar on down. Okay, we were humble. We shut our mouth and listened from the apostles. So these people that come up, they got to shut their mouth and listen also. They don't run the show. We run the show. Okay. All right. Like I said, and let them answer this goddamn question. The burden of the word of the Lord of it, Lord to Israel by Malachi. It says, I have loved you. It didn't say I have loved everybody. It says, I have loved you, saith the Lord. That's all caps. Yahweh, God, the supreme being. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? So ask him, who the hell is Esau? What is this? This is a major key component here. If they can't answer these questions, kick rocks, man. You need to be quiet and let us edify you on this, man. This isn't a debate. 
We're not out here to debate. This isn't this isn't the conscious community. We are here to edify and wake up the elect. Okay? And if they can't answer certain questions, it's not for them, man. I have loved you, saith the Lord, Yahweh. Yet say, yet ye say, wherein have hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I have yet I love Jacob. And I have hated Esau. So they want to come up and talk about these Gentiles and everybody can be saved. And once you believe on Christ, okay, you could think that, but we know the Lord doesn't change. Precepts. Pull precepts on that. Ask them. Does the Lord change? Put them in a box. Let them let them pick a side, man. It's simple. And if they can't, stick to what they're saying. Keep it moving. We out there for the elect. Not to entertain these scoffers, man. It says, and I hated Esau. So right there, they tell you, everybody not equal. Everybody can't be made. Everybody not the same. Okay? The Lord loves some people. The Lord hates some people. Okay? And laid his mountains and heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people, we can, we, the brother, starting from Apostle Tahar, Apostle Gabar, uh, Ramla, they've all, Apostle Ramla, they've all, many brothers have broken this down many of times, man. We know this scripture very well. So like I said, pull it on their ass, man. Ask them, does the Lord change? Because I want to know, what does this mean? If they can't answer it, they're not qualified to debate the scriptures, man. That's what these people do. They dance around and play semantics. Put them in a corner, in a, in a hole, man. Put them in a box. It's a simple math. One plus one is two. Simple. If they say one plus one is four, then you know they, that person ain't right. The Lord ain't dealing with that person. Simple mathematics. It says, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord, Yahweh, all caps, God, hath indignation forever. So what happened here? Who is this people? Like I said, throughout the scriptures, that's the main theme. Let's get Obadiah. <laughs> like Apostle, the, Apostle uh, Tahar said the other day, Obadiah 118. All right? I'm going to start up, though. This is Obadiah 1 verse 15. Ask these people these questions, man. Does the Lord change? You know, they got to they gotta answer this before they can move forward. Don't let them move forward and ask you about uh, John 3.16 and all this bullshit. And no, you come in before the prophets, okay? You don't have understanding. That's why you come in here, okay? You come in here to be taught, all right? It says, Obadiah 1 verse 15, For the day of the Lord, Yahweh, is near upon all heathen. And yet, best believe, it is near. We getting closer and closer. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Exactly. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. And that's what they're running from. All the heathen, not just Esau, all the other nations, they running from this man. For as ye have drunken upon my holy mountain, there goes that holy, separate, holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, that sh they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. So you got to answer this, man. It, it says upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. It didn't say upon the heathen. Make them answer this stuff, man. It's uh, and then that's what happened. when you when you just battling back and forth. No, you can't. The Lord dis inspired these men to write these scriptures. This is straight from the Most High's thoughts, His will. This is His words, man. You can't get no better than quoting scriptures and let them answer it. Let them break it down. And if they don't have the answers, let them kick rocks. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall be, shall possesses their possessions. What does this? Let them break it down. And if they don't have the answers, tell them, shut the hell up and break it down to them. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. What does that mean? And the house of Esau. For, why does Esau keep coming up? Because Jacob and Esau is a common three. That's the protagonist and the antagonist, man. They are the Esau is the ve the the, uh, the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, man. And we are the, the righteous ones, man. A every movie you watch has good and bad people. You can't get around it, man. Every everybody want to run from this Esau shit, man. Let them answer it. Who is this people? Who are the Israelites? Where are they at? I'm, I'm going to drop this, man. 
I'm going to drop this. Uh, actually, let me close it. Let me read it out, and then I'm going to move forward. I don't want to make this too long. And it says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What does this mean? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Has this happened yet? Ask them. The Lord, for the Lord has spoken it. Okay? The, so ask them, has this happened yet, man? And what happened? If this hasn't happened yet, how the hell can you say everybody can be saved? Ask them. Simple questions. Simple. Who is this? Who is this talking about? Ask them. Who is this talking about? Ezekiel 35. Demons. Right, Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by, by the force of the sword. So it doesn't seem like the Lord is concerned with the whole world, man. It seems like the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is concerned with Israel, man. It's very simple. It's not rocket science, man. And if you stick to the scriptures and not lean upon your own and just want to bet, no. If you say something, go to the scriptures, man. The Lord cut them every which way, man. They can't get around this, man. Stick to the scripts. That's what I'm going to call this. Stick to the scripts, man, and put them in a box. Body bag them. Okay, Obadiah 118 them, man. They can't get around these scriptures, man. And and, and if they can't be sincere, and, and kick rocks, man. We eat shit all day at the fucking slavery, man. When you go out there on the highways and the byways to teach, that is your time, man. You don't have to entertain every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Carry yourself as a prophet, as a man of the Lord. Bold, an austere man, man. We have the truth. The angels of the Lord are encamping around us. Do you really believe that? They can't fuck with us on no type of level. That's why you're supposed to study to show thyself approved. So when they do, when these demons do come up, you could disseminate them, slice them, and dice them spiritually through the word. Stick to the script. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of, ch of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity hath an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and the blood shall pursue thee. Sit thou, sit thou hast, uh, Salakia, sit thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus, Will I make Mount Seir most... Who is Mount Seir? Ask him this. Why is Esau, the Dukes of Edom, why does this nation keep coming up? Ask him these questions. This nation must be pretty important, just like the Israelites, because they keep coming up over and over and over. Ask him that. Ask them. And if they were so important, just like Yasharal is important, why don't they... Uh, why would the Lord just say, okay, they can make it? They got to answer these questions, man. They have to answer them. They don't have the answers. They can't. They, they don't have the answers because we have the answers. Okay. I'm going to drop that because I don't want to make this too long. I got two more scriptures. All right. All right. All right. And this is this is what I always have and make them because they, they, they're they going to lie. They're going to either say, oh, Esau's done away with or they don't know or this, this and that. Make them answer it. Ecclesiasticus. Uh, Salakia, this is uh, Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes, all right? It says uh, Ecclesiastes 4 and 15. It says, I considered all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his steed. There is no end of all the people. I'm going to read that over. Ecclesiastes 4 and 16. Acts because they, what, what, the, which, how can you get around this? This is, uh, you say you believe in the Most High, you say you believe in the Scriptures. So answer this. We go precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. That's how we, we go. We, the, the, it's called, uh, we, we're putting a puzzle together, man. We don't just believe anything. We believe, we, we use the Scriptures to filter our thinking, man. So, like I said, make them ask them this, man. There is no end of the people. Even all of them, or even of all that have been before them, they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. And all this bullshit is vexation of the spirit. I should get that scripture, but I'm not. All of this shit is vexation of the spirit for the for the for the true men of the Most High, man. 
for these scoffers to come up to us on, on no level, man. Don't with no understanding. It's frustrating, man. That's why I said make them prove what they say. Back it up, man. If you say something, prove it. If they don't have the scriptures, kick rocks. Go home, do your research, and come back. Try again another day. All right? I'm going to close it out with 2nd Ezra, okay? So I'm going to start 2nd Ezra 7, uh, Salakia. 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau, like I keep saying, that's the protagonist and the antagonist. That's the common thread. You have, If you call yourself a man of the Lord following the scriptures, you have to answer these questions, man. What happened to Jacob's Yasharala? What happened to Esau? Where are they at? Where are these people at? Because it's a major theme. It's a major theme in the scriptures. I'm going to slock you. It says, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay? And I'm going to close it out at that, man, because it's simple. That's the, you can't run from that, man. You want to come up, you want to talk about Gentiles, you want to talk about all that other bullshit. We can deal with that. We can deal with that. But you have to understand first, you don't understand the scriptures. You have to wrap your mind around you don't understand the goddamn scriptures. You need to be taught again. As we were taught again by the true prophets of the Most High, starting from Apostle Tahar on down. All right? And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. And I'm going to say, like I said, stick to the script, man. You say something, back it up with the scriptures. You know, amongst the brotherhood, you could talk. You know, because we, you supposed to, you, you know, we, we are, we, we supposed to be in the scriptures, so we know what we're talking about. But these outsiders stick to the script, man. Stick to the script. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.